from King's House. Okay, so there's some of the things that I've learned over these last few years on uh, training and on preparation and on the race day. And what I'd like to do now is to get Rosie up. So if Rosie could come up, where she is. And uh, just maybe I'd like to ask a few questions on those areas about how, uh, how Rosie has prepared and trained for those. And then we can take some of the questions as well, some of the ones that, that you might have. But first of all, Rosie, can you just tell us a little bit about your history in the West Highland Way, for those who don't know you? How many times you've done it? What's your best time? Completed uh, seven uh, West Highland Ways now. And my best time was 20 over 15 minutes last year. So your eighth, your seventh one was your fastest? Yeah. Look at yeah. that, that's impressive, isn't it? You know, to get, yeah, well, well. <laughs> And not only did you run your fastest, but you also won the race, didn't you? Yeah, won the especially race. I did. Yeah. How did that feel? Um, I don't let myself ever believe I could do it until yeah. I actually got to the, the finish. Um, right. I, but it was quite, I don't know if it was anything to do with training or training hadn't really changed any in previous years um, or if it was just the adrenaline but at the end I was still running hills where I'd usually be crawling up them and um, so it was, a, it was a fantastic game. Yeah, yeah, that was excellent. Okay, so if we think about those those three areas, Rosie, um, your trainer, I've said that I'm very structured in my training. Yeah. Uh, no. Can you give us a little <laughs> bit of, 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 uh, of your training, say from you know January onwards, how, how, does, how does your training yeah, go? Um, I really, I only run sort of twice a week, um, a Wednesday night with the Strange Striders and a Sunday with uh, our fellow um, endurance runners as well. Um, I do a lot of cross training, um, circuit training, uh, body pump, um, spin classes. Uh, so other than just running, I tend to do more of the time I'm just I'm cross training more than running. <coughs> But I think the whole, certainly body pump, uh, for anybody who doesn't know what that is, it's a like, weight class and um, you're working your whole body um, and it certainly helps strength wise with your core strength, upper body strength as well. Um, so I certainly think that is a big factor, um, just the whole strength in it as well, yeah. So that's, again, two very different approaches. I'm running five or six times a week, Rosie's running twice a week and our time's pretty similar, aren't they? Yeah. And we've had some good battles on, the, on the, some of the races that we've done together. Uh, to, as, again, different ways of doing it. What about your sort of longer runs? Do you get on the West Highland Way route? Do, do you like yeah, to actually yeah. practice on so the route? Last year we did, we got up a lot, uh, um, Stuart Craig and I, and we got up a lot onto the, the West Highland Way. And I think that helped as well because it just it was fresh, the route was fresh in the mind. Yeah. You knew what was coming up next. Um, but we do try and get up as often as we can. Uh, but in streaming, we've got a lot of off-road routes uh, near us, so we try and get off-road as much as possible as well. Yeah. Because um, it certainly, as you feel like tougher, your first off-road run of the season um, certainly feels tougher in the body, and then as your training goes on, you get more used to it. Yeah. And is that is that something that's structured, or do you just decide, oh, I fancy having a long run this week, or is it planned no, out? No, we try to um, start off just gradually building the mileage up. Um, the last few weeks we've been doing some 20 miles each Sunday. Um, but the best Highland Way runs are just a weekend that we can get Craig's wife, Anne-Marie, <laughs> and get her talked into taking us up there. Um, she very kindly drops us off and then she drives and picks us up again. Um, so they're not, the, the runs on the natural route aren't structured, it's just really when we can all get together and get up there. Um, so we've had a couple so far this year. Good. And um, you doing the flick this year? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that'll be my longest run before the race. Um, it always is. Yeah. Um, and it's a good, being in the uh, end of April, it's a good judge as well uh, to fitness whether you can just keep ticking over until the race or if you need to get more miles in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Good. Okay, so that's a little bit about your training. What about your preparation? Yeah. Are you someone who likes to plan it all out or? How, how do you find your um, preparation? I do have, a, look for my backup crew, I do have a sort of list of what I would like at certain places. Um, but as you say as well, it quite often changes. Um, quite often they, they get mixed up with the list as well. So I'm quite sort of laid back in that if they don't have what I want ready, I don't get too upset about it. Um, 
but I do try and have a sort of structured list of what I would like, certain places um, where I'd like to change my shoes, where I'll change from my bottle belt to my camel bag, things like that. Um, so I do do that. Uh, the big thing that helped last year I did um, was I had all the plastic boxes with clothes in and I put labels on the edge of all the boxes so it was easy to see you know, what was in each box rather than rummaging through thinking that's tops or no, that's bottoms. And, so um, that was that was quite helpful last year to do that. Yeah, yeah I yeah. think that's a good idea. It's certainly for your, your, your team to know where things yeah, are. Yeah. 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 Good. Okay, so what about uh, on race day? Do you have a, a clear strategy of what you're trying to do? Or how, how I do, do have the, uh, I have that sort of breakdown of where I would like to be at certain times. Um, if I don't get there, I don't get too upset about it. Um, every year I'm just going into the race, I want to finish. Um, but I think just personally, I'm a determined person and I'll push myself you know, as much as I can. Um, but I've certainly never gone in thinking that I'm going to do this time and get upset if I don't do it. Um, I always have just gone in thinking um, to finish the race is what I want to do. Yeah. Um, and luckily out in the seven I've finished the seven. So, That's good. Uh, I'm happy with that. Yeah, well done. <laughs> Uh, what about um, shoes? Do you, uh, do you change shoes or do you Yeah, do you um, I usually start off with road shoes uh, and then uh, either Balm Hat or certainly if not a Balm Hat or a I change into off road. Um, and I like the salmon um, for the toe bumper. Uh, so when you start kicking stones, you don't feel it. <laughs> yeah, so it's, and then usually I would just stay in then until the end of the race. Yeah. Stay in the salmons. Yep. Yeah. And things like your, your food, have you got certain things that you will always go to? Um, again, I have a sort of list of what I'd like to eat, but quite often I vary off that as well. Um, my two main food stops, River Denon and say, Bridge Borky. And River Denon, I usually have a cup of coffee and a roll of bacon, is my thing I have there. And then Bridge of Borky, I try and get some pasta. Um, but quite often by then, I kind of can't be bothered eating anymore. So, uh, I tend to go more for the energy bars and sort of sweets, <coughs> sweets, things like that, um, chocolate raisins. Uh, but certainly just on training runs, we have noticed I don't eat as much as what the, some of the guys eat that I run with as well. So I don't know if it's just in my makeup, but I don't need as much fuel to, to keep going. But. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's a male female thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But you were saying that this was your last year was your fastest. Mm -hmm. Do you think there was anything in particular that um, that made you go that bit quicker? I don't know. My training hadn't changed at all, but in 2010, um, before the race, I was I was actually dreading it. I was wasn't looking forward to it at all. I had lost my enthusiasm, um, so I had decided before the race that. This, I was having a year off afterwards um, and I had a particularly tough race. I felt sick from uh, driven that year and just felt sick the rest of the way. Um, so I was quite ha happy to be having a year off 2011. Um, but I backed up a fellow um, club runner, Craig. Uh, we did all the training together and backed him up. And by the time I saw the lights popping along at um, Beach Tree, I went to be doing the race now, so uh, well, I came back last year. And I don't know if I was just having a year off, uh, just more enthusiasm about it, or because my training was all really the same. Yeah. Yeah. Just and everything then, went right that year. I think that and was in a sense, sense that, you know, the weather last year was probably the worst that of the races awful, you've done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because my plan was not to really stop, just to keep moving and eat, you know, in the walk. Yeah. Um, but I had to stop more often to get changed. But then, if I hadn't done that, I maybe wouldn't have finished the race. Yeah. You know, if I had got yeah. so cold and wet. So, so are you yeah. hoping for rain again this year? Then? <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Just finally, have you, have you got any sort of a couple of tips for people, particularly doing the race for the first time, from your experience? Anything in that um, you'd like to share? Just really to respect the route. Um, you know, don't go into it like heartedly. Uh, if you put the training in, you will get the results as well. Um, but a good thing that uh, Tony, one of our fellow runners as well, um, said in my first ever at West Island Way, um, you will have low points, you will be down, um, but you will come out them as well. 
uh, and any time that you're low and you feel like packing it in, think can't go any further, just take a minute. Think of yourself sitting in the hall on the Sunday at the presentation, getting your role, like your name getting called out, and that has always been something that any of my little moments I've always thought of that and thought, well, I'm going to keep going. Yeah. I want that goblet. Yeah. And you've got seven of them. Yeah, I've got seven. Yeah. <laughs> so what about your race for this year? Are you, uh, do you feel you can go quicker or what, what's your thoughts? Just going to get into it in the same, yeah. same thoughts, yeah. just do what I can do and see what happens. Yeah. Obviously if I can do it quicker, if I get rid of that 15 minutes, that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, get 19 hours or something, that would just be fantastic. But, um, just to complete it again, which is what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you very much. We might have time just to have a few questions at the end, but I just wanted to uh, to get Paul up as well. And uh, Paul has done well, you can tell yourself. Uh, but we thought it good, again, just to get a bit of a variety of different people and their, their thoughts of training. So Paul, just maybe introduce yourself for those who don't know you, and particularly your experience of uh, the West Highland Way. Hi, I'm Paul, everyone. Uh, I've done two West Highland Way races. Uh, first one was in 2010. I think I finished in 19... Seven or something, 19 or seven minutes. Um, it was a really great race uh, for most of it until I was the one that maybe people have heard about. They got lost at Kinloch Leaving. Um, I lost about an hour. I thought I was really understanding what was going wrong and I thought, no, I can't possibly be going the wrong way here. Um, I guess I was probably a little bit tired, so I was wading through rivers and everything. And by the time I finally got to Kinloch Leaving, um, I was slightly distraught about it. Um, last year went, was a bit more smooth for me. Um, I finished in 17 hours and 26 seconds, I think. <laughs> 26 seconds too slow. <laughs> 27 seconds too slow. Um, so yeah, um, that was a good, good race last year. Yeah. Okay, so again, Paul, just thinking about these, these areas, could you give us a little bit of a feel about, at your level, what sort of training you put in to be able to run 17 hours and 26 seconds? Yeah, um, my training is totally different from, yeah. from the two descriptions there. I guess I, I generally run uh, twice a day for five days during the week, and then I'm doing a long run on a Saturday. A long run will be anything over 30 miles, so um, most weeks I'm, I'm doing between 18 and 100 or so miles, um, and that's reasonably consistent. There'll be, I guess, probably one week in a month that I'll do slightly less, and I'll maybe do something else and get out on the bike for a wee while if I can. Mm. And do you find you, you can, you obviously your, your body copes with that okay? Yeah, I mean I've been doing it for quite a while now, so I get up at a ridiculous time in the morning because I generally start work quite early, um, so I get up. Isn't your hashtag 444? Four, four? Yeah. Is I, that I, to do with Yeah, that's, uh, I leave the house usually at quarter to five for a morning run, I get back in, get changed, get to work, and then I'll try to run home at night as well, so um, I've been doing that for a couple of years now, so I'm kind of used to doing it. And is that, is that a, a mixture of things, speed sessions, road, off-road, what would be yeah, it? Yeah, it's a mixture. So I guess um, Sunday I'll usually just do a recovery run from the long run on the Saturday. So Monday, uh, usually try and get straight back into it, maybe do a hill session in the morning um, or some intervals in the morning on the Monday. Tuesday might be a slightly easier session, Wednesday again it'll be a speed session, Thursday um, like a double session, I'll do slightly longer on a Thursday. And then a half session on a Friday, ready for the big long run on the Saturday. Um, and it kind of generally goes like that. So I try to mix it up as much as I can. And I try to make the long run on the Saturday as interesting as I can. So try and get out to some new places, get some hills in, um, and make it as tough and as interesting as I can. Yeah. And those long runs, is that on the, on the West Highland Way route? Do you practice on the route? or? Do you... Yeah, I mean, I've been on the route loads of times to the point. I'm probably sick of it a wee bit <laughs> and I tried to give it a bit of a break before the fling and before the West Island way so um, yeah I try and get off road as much as I can because that's what I enjoy doing um, but I guess from a timing perspective a lot of it's spent on the road during the week um, just just to get it done as quickly as I can. Yeah and, and st that training is that races as well is it important for you to race regularly? Yeah I race as much as I can I, I probably do would say maybe do too many races or, or something or um, I just get really excited about it. I love racing, I love being in the middle of it, I love racing people, I love the atmosphere. 
um, and, and maybe do too many. So I think in my first year I did seven. I attempted seven or eight last year, um, and I'll probably try and do seven again this year, um, just because I enjoy it. And it, it probably means I don't always get the result that I want, but I, I just enjoy racing. Yeah. Okay. And then the second point thing about preparation, um, obviously the training is a big part of that. But any thoughts on the way you prepare for races, in the sense of thinking about your food and and your gear and that sort of stuff? Yeah, I'm really I'm quite organised when it comes to the race itself. So I'll do my plan a couple of weeks before the race, which includes what time I want to be at certain checkpoints, includes what I want to eat, how much I'll drink before it. Um, which is really useful for my support crew, particularly on the West Island Way, so they've got a clear idea exactly of what I'm looking for, when. Um, a couple of times I'm probably a wee bit moody when I get in, <laughs> if, if it's not exactly as what I've said on the plan, but likewise I expect them to be able to read my mind that I don't want what I've put down in the plan. <laughs> um, is that right, Mum? <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, I'm very lucky with the support crew, but I think it pays, certainly for the West Island Way, to take as much of that kind of stress out of it, out of the Friday before it as you can. So the first year I did it, um, I tried to organise all my drinks and all my food and checkpoints and clothes on the Friday. And I ended up, it's, it, I took the whole day on the Friday. I was up on my feet doing stuff. Um, where as John had said earlier, I really suggest you try and get as much as you can done in the morning and just lie about or sit about or watch a movie or read a book or try and get some sleep and stay off your feet as much as possible. So. Um, I guess it helps if you're trying to move as much as that stress early on, so get your shopping done a couple of days before, make sure you've got everything in the house. I try to have a think about what meal I'll have mm. on the Friday, what meal I'll have on the Thursday night before, just so you've got everything prepared and everything organised. And it takes away some of those potential stresses on the Friday and the Saturday of the race. Yeah. And just on about food, I know when we did the podcast, then you talked a little bit about your, your diet as well. Do you want to tell us a little bit about... Uh, your, your diet? Yeah, um, I don't eat meat, I don't eat dairy, so I guess I'm probably a vegan, I just don't like the term vegan because everybody thinks I'm happy or I just don't like food. Uh, I love food and I'm not happy. Um, I've been vegan for about two years uh, and for me um, I find it really fits with what I do in terms of ultra running. I think um, I'm very careful about what we eat, obviously because I have to be or I choose to be. Um, but it helps me to recover more quickly, I think. Um, it does pose some challenges sometimes for races in that you need to be quite planned ahead about what you're going to have and um, there's times it's easier just to grab something that, I don't know, even is down to the little pots of porridge that you get. They've got milk in them, obviously. And, um, so uh, it needs to be quite organised, but I think it's really benefited me. I know there's a lot of chat about diets, particularly for ultra runners and paleo diets and vegan diets and high carb, low carb, but um, I guess it's just about finding what fits you and what works best for you, but uh, it certainly works okay for me. Although, I was at a race on Saturday uh, and I was standing before the race to go into the toilet and some guy was running his first ultra and he was a, quite a, a big gentleman, <laughs> said it properly, and he just ran and made some remark about how skinny I was and oh look at this skinny guy, you've obviously run a few races, which Okay, and then what about race day? Have you got, uh, again, I would imagine you've got quite a clear plan of you, you said, in your preparation. Um, but what sort of strategy do you have in, um, for the West Highland Way? Um, I mean, I'm quite clear before I start what times I want to hit for each of the checkpoints. I don't break them down into two or three mile chunks. I, I generally stick with the the first one being 12 miles or whatever, that's your trim. Uh, I know what time I want to hit. I know what time it's going to be too fast. And I know what time I think it's going to be a little bit too slow. Um, obviously, it's quite easy. You get excited. It's a really exciting start. It's in the middle of the night, everybody's got head touches on. People are shouting and clapping. It's quite easy to run away too quickly, um, which I'm probably still guilty of, if, if I'm honest. I'm trying my best not to be. Um, but it's such a long race. and even when you have those low spells and you feel that you really just want to stop or you want to have a walk, it doesn't mean it's the end of your race. So have a walk for a few minutes and you might find a bit more energy and you might feel like, well, I've run to that next tree then and then it can all kind of move on quite quickly from there again. So um, nothing's a disaster unless you allow it to be a disaster, I guess, on the West End. Mm. Yeah. You were saying about that first race when you got when you got lost into Kinnock Leaven, 
and um, sort of mentally, was that hard to cope with, and, and, and how did you cope with that? Yeah, was something yeah. going quite drastically wrong in a race? Because you were third or fourth at that point, weren't you? And you lost a couple of places yeah. and had to try and you know, deal yeah, with I that. Yeah, I mean, uh, coming off Devil's Staircase down towards Kinloch Leaving, I was thinking, this is my first race ever made race. I'm in a great position here, I feel okay. I'll soon be down in Kinloch Leaving, I'm going to get some warm food that's been prepared exactly as I put in the plan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I was coming down the hill, and for some reason, I, I guess it probably creeps up on you a little bit. I didn't really realise I wasn't thinking straight. I got to a junction that isn't really a junction, but I decided to turn right rather than just follow the main path down. And uh, I, I was just so convinced that I couldn't possibly be going the wrong way that I, I, I just continued to push on, thinking, no, no, this will be fine. I'll pop out and kind of leave in no time. To the point I was actually, I, I saw things that weren't there. I could see vans, I could see a bridge over the river that wasn't there, and it was just a branch. Um, so I guess it can creep up on you that you maybe don't, you're not thinking as straight as you normally would. Um, and that was certainly quite difficult to deal with by the time I realised that I'd, I, I felt as if I'd just ruined my race entirely. Uh, I probably lost about an hour, and then it was hard to pick myself back up again and go back out of Kinloch Cleveland and back up onto uh, Larrigan Moor. So, um, yeah, it was quite hard to deal with, but uh, I guess I was always going to finish, although I wanted to kick some things around the room and, yeah. and make a bit of a fuss and be dramatic. Why not? It's my yes. <laughs> Uh, and then finally, have you got any, any thoughts that you'd like to pass on, particularly, uh, say, for those who are doing the race for the first time from your yeah, couple yeah, of years? Yeah, yeah, I guess a couple of things. Uh, probably for the support team, I guess, because it's such a long day for the support crews that um, you may be really concentrating on what you have to get ready for your runner when they get into a certain checkpoint, and should they get a change, should they be checking if they've lost weight, do they look okay? And it's forgetting to maybe feed yourself and make sure uh, you're looking after yourself so that you're still okay by the time you get towards the end of the race. I think that's really important and something that we learned from the first race. And I guess my support crew were a wee bit more organised for the second race. Because um, it is a tiring day for them. and I, I forget how stressed they probably get waiting for the runner to come in. Uh, whereas I don't really suffer that stress, I'm just concentrating on running. Um, I guess other tips, I wouldn't spend very long in checkpoints if you can help it. I, I don't really stop at them at all if I can help it. Um, grab your stuff if you've got food and drinks there and you can, grab your stuff and maybe even just walk and start eating your food and get your drinks down you because every step you're getting closer to Fort William obviously and if you stand about for too long uh, you'll get cold and then it's, it's much be, it must be much, much more difficult to uh, start again. Great, thanks. And for this, this year's race, what, what are your plans, hopes, aims? Uh, I'm looking to maybe gain 27. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I would hope to be quicker again this year, but um, we'll see what happens. Yeah. I'm feeling good, training's going well, so um, yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah. Good, thank you very much. Okay, I think we've got just a few minutes. Ian, do you want to um, just lead some questions? If, uh, I don't know whether you want, you want to get Rosie and Paul back up. Yeah, but if, uh, I mean, if we can just take some questions from the floor, if there's anything that people want to know for any of the speakers that we've had so far. John. Do, do, do Rosie and Paul do shorter races? Do Rosie and Paul do shorter races? Like half marathon, 10k, 5k. Actually, do you want to try and come out and then we can get it on the. Uh, on the video as well. So the, the question was about short term races, was it? Yeah, I do some hill races, um, with Tinto, Connecty Five, um, and then after that, it's really just ultras um, that I would do rather than short term races. Uh, I, the, I've done a few uh, 10Ks before I've ever done an ultra, but I've never run a half marathon, I've never run a marathon or anything. Um, so just ultras mostly. But you don't use them as part of your training? I don't know, I mean, I, I can be quite careful about the times that I'll run a 10k that I'll just do in training, that I'll try and reach, but I, I, I don't tend to do the races, no. Another question?
And the way, the way I've done it is I go to Balmahar and I run Balmahar to Bridgewalkie and then spend the night at the Bridgewalkie Hotel. That's, so that's 42 miles and then from there 35 miles to Fort William. And I find it's the second day which is the key day for me because you're running with tired legs, you've run 42 miles the day before and your legs feel really tired and that's what it's like in the race. It's quite hard to replicate what the last 30 miles are going to be like because you don't really want to run 95 miles in training. So I find that's helpful. Right, okay. The, the, the question about the tape, I mean, it's maybe one that I'll ask, I'll ask the guys, but it, it was discussed in quite a lot of detail in Edinburgh, actually. The general consensus seemed to be for three weeks out, people tapered out. I'm quite interested. Rosie, what's your views on tapering? Yeah, usually sort of three, four weeks before the race. Um, so is that from two runs to one, is it? What you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Just a bit, I should. <laughs> um, I would certainly uh, lower my mileage, um, but I'm still certainly up till the Monday, Tuesday um, before the race, I would still be doing my classes, sort of body pump circuits classes. Um, and then the Wednesday night I would go to training and if it was a speed session, I would just take it easy. I wouldn't do anything um, to cause injury. Um, and then take the first day off. Because I, I feel I'd get more sort of anxious if, I don't, if I'm not doing things. So I would take the first day off and then always have the Friday off work to prepare as well. Um, I'd probably do my last long run, maybe just two weeks before uh, the West Ham race. So that would be on. Uh, the Saturday or the Sunday, I'll maybe do uh, between 30 and 40 miles um, and then I'll continue the following week doing some of my kind of during the week training and then the week before the race I, I tend to just go out in the morning for a, a few easy miles uh, for a couple of days and then the last few days before the race I, I, I try not to run if I can help it. I, I used to, I used to from three weeks out, sort of cut down two thirds, one third, but what, what I always liked to do, I did this a few years, was I did a 10k the Saturday before in Bears Den, there was a 10k there, and it was sort of the, the feeling of going to the start and, and also running hard, I, I didn't, I didn't hope hang back on it, but I ran hard and I felt when I then got to race day, it'd been enough time to recover, but I did feel nice and comfortable and easy, so that worked, worked for me, but Everybody quite different. I think for me, I would I would do my that four that two day run will be four weeks before. The next week will be an easy week, and then I have a medium week where I probably do sort of twelve or sixteen up on the Braes in Paisley, and then the last two weeks I just run every other day, but all easy between about five to six miles. Yeah. Any other questions? One there. Quick questions about food the week before the ultra specifically. Well, yeah, I, I, I've tried a number of things. There's a lot of talk about uh, carb loading and maybe uh, two weeks before having more protein and then cutting out carbs and then building up carbs again. But I've found when I've tried things like that, I end up just messing with my stomach and I end up having a race with a dodgy stomach. So I actually just try and keep it as normal as possible, to be honest. Last couple of days before the race, I maybe have slightly more carbs, but um, I tend to avoid kind of pasta and um, kind of wheat-based stuff if I can help it. Baked potatoes, sweet potatoes, stuff like that, um, and try and have a kind of normal meal uh, before it if I can. I'll probably eat a bit more than normal, um, which is a lot anyway. But, um, yeah, I, I try not to do too much that's different, to be honest. Yeah, I'll just uh, try and keep my diet just as much the same as possible. Um, I don't want to eat anything that's too much different from my usual diet, um, so my stomach doesn't get upset. Um, my diet tends to be sort of mostly chicken, uh, pasta, rice, potatoes, so I tend just to stick with that. Um, I don't really have anything out of the ordinary. I would certainly say, say for if you're doing the first ultra to make sure you don't do anything different because I was saying before about your preparation, if you're doing a long run then try it, if you want to try something, try it before a, a training run. If you try something new before the first ultra and it doesn't work, 
then you've wasted all that time. So I would keep to as much as you've you know as you've done before. Any take one in front. What's the most you would do in a single run? Most most you would do in a single run. John. And um, well, it would be the fling for me. So the, the 53 miles, and then that two-day run, 75 over two days. So for me, but my, my average my, my average weekly mileage is it builds up between 45, and then the most I'd ever do is like this week. This week I'll do 70, but that's because I'm doing 40 in one go. Um, so my mileage is a lot less than Paul's, and a lot more than Rosie's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mine would be the flying in Spain. Um, yep, that would be the, the most I would do, but as I said, it's a good judge um, how your fitness is going, uh, whether you can just keep ticking over until the race or if you need to try and get more miles, uh, more strength than before it. Yeah, pretty much the same, probably 50 to 55 miles would be the longest run, unless you're doing some kind of challenge or whatever. Um, when I've done longer, but it wasn't really just before the race, obviously. And it takes a lot less for Paul doing this 50 than... than uh. <laughs> there was a bit of debate in Edinburgh the night about using the flingers race when we were not enough all the time, but there was a sort of view, a few, some people pushed it hard, but the general consensus there was to use the flingers as a training run seven, eight weeks out, rather than something which you absolutely go hell for leather as your number one race if you want to do the best time and weight. And I think that, that came across as a bit of a theme that, to recover fully within eight weeks that length of race. Well, diff again, different people will respond differently, but I think probably the, the coach advised me to, to go for it. I was going to potentially leave you not fully recovered. Maybe time for, for one last question. Again, it's horses for courses, but I think 
probably if we look back 15 years, most people did the 10, the half marathons, marathons, then suddenly found the ultras and moved on to that. It's been a bit different that way. Okay, if, if I could just wind things up with, with a vote of thanks to our speakers tonight. I think it's been a super night. It's, uh, first of all, if I, could, if I could thank Run and Become and Adrian. They, Run and Become have been great supporters to the race for, for a number of years and support the training and inspiration night. So thank you, Adrian, for the support. <laughs> I think all, all of the speakers tonight have been, been fantastic. It's been some really good discussion. Thanks to Stan and support. Thanks to, to Chris Ellis for coming all the way down. Can can look leaving to give the medical talk, which is hugely important and we take it really seriously. Thanks to John for, for his talk. And thanks to Paul and Rosie as well. Uh, just just for me to wish you all the best. We're getting into that stage now where I'm sure everybody who's taking part has built up their training. Everybody's getting quite excited about it. Good luck for the next few months and hopefully see you all in Fort William.